So seven years ago, I made this video, the NVIDIA Quadro RTX card, specs and prices. This video was part of a series about the launch of the Turing generation cards from NVIDIA and the RTX architecture. At the time, we didn't know it, but this would turn out to be one of the turning points in the history of modern that computing. DGX1 was smaller. And, um, you know, so, so, um, you know, imagine, ladies and gentlemen, our... This is NVIDIA's latest AI supercomputer. And at the same time as NVIDIA launched the RTX cards, they launched and something called the DGX, which was the professional variant of the RTX technology, but designed for professionals. At the time, I decided to follow the GeForce cards, but it turns out that things have gone full circle and now NVIDIA is going to be coming out with a DGX computer that is going to fit on your desktop. It's everywhere. People are talking like 100% AI assistance in the future. It's definitely ramping up. Yeah, yeah, the tools are getting incredibly powerful. Okay, so let's unpack this a bit because uh, we're taking a deep dive today into something brand new that feels like a step towards that future. It's the NVIDIA DGX Spark. A project Digit says it was known. Exactly. They're calling it a Grace Blackwell AI supercomputer on your desk, which sounds ambitious. It really does. Bringing that kind of data center power down to the individual user's desk, mm -hmm. that's quite a statement. As we know, right, so NVIDIA look, produces three types of products. It produces the data center types of products, which have become the dominant factor in modern day computing. It produces professional cards, and it also produces gaming cards. Now, the gaming cards were the main part of NVIDIA until quite recently. Now, the data center has become dominant. But if you want to get that data center advantage on your desktop, there is now an alternative. This actually brings the Gracewell Blackwell AI supercomputer architecture onto your desktop. Let's see how it works. Now, the first thing you need to understand is that this is going to bring 1000 tops of AI performance. Now I've seen this sometimes referred to as FP4 AI tops, but in any case, it can handle up to 200, 200 billion parameters locally. So you won't need to necessarily share your information with a cloud provider. And it also brings in 128 gigabytes of unified memory, which is the main advantage. What are you getting with this new computer? You're getting the NVIDIA GB10 super chip, 1000 AI tops of AI performance at FP4 precision using the Grace Blackwell architecture. We've got 128 gigabytes of coherent unified system memory. Now this is the advantage. This is a few years ago, I was talking about how Intel and AMD never innovated and we needed to rely on Apple to innovate. Apple came out with their M1 series of chips. Now Nvidia is innovating with 128 gigabytes of unified memory. I think that's the best architecture for artificial intelligence. You get Nvidia Connect X networking. And with this computer, you also get a full stack solution for generative AI workloads. This will allow you to not just run the models, it will allow you to fine tune the models, it will allow you to train the models. What you're getting is the GB10 super chip, which consists of a PC, of a, basically a PC CPU. So it's going to be the Grace CPU, that is an ARM CPU, and you're going to get a GPU from NVIDIA. And you're going to get the anything between one and four terabytes of SSD storage. So it's a little bit like the kind of thing that we get right now with Apple. And I do see this as a competitor to Apple, maybe more than a competitor to more than a competitor to AMD and Intel, who have basically let's be blunt about it. They've basically failed to take up the challenge. And here Nvidia is taking up the challenge they're going to be the ones that are competing with Apple. 
and given those Apple prices, we do need some competition. They're suggesting you're going to use this for prototyping. You're going to use it for fine tuning. It's able to fine tune AI models up to 70 billion parameters. And that's with that 828 gigabytes of memory. You can do obviously inferencing and they say inferencing with models up to 200 billion parameters. It's useful for edge applications and it's coming with a software stack that you can use so that you can use it with, for instance, Isaac Metropolis. You can use it with Holoscan. This is all coming as part of the package with this computer. Another use case, you can use it for data science and you can use it to accelerate end-to-end -end data science workflows with NVIDIA Rapids. So it is definitely one for the professionals. And I think NVIDIA looking out for the professionals with a product which is designed specially for professionals is going to be an improvement over the situation we had in the past where you had to purchase GPUs with like, you know, up to 64 gigs of RAM, but very expensive and nowhere near quite as capable as the Apple setup. Now the specs for this include a 20 core ARM CPU. And one of the things to bear in mind about this is that the specs here are actually the same as the specs for the DGX1, the corporate gigantic computer that used to have literally 20 CPUs, 20 CPU cores, but it's been miniaturized so it will literally fit into a package that will be able to sit on your hands. We're getting 256 bit memory interface, an enormous amount of memory bandwidth and either one or four terabytes of M2 memory or M2 storage to be more precise. You're going to get USB storage or USB connectivity and you're also going to get HDMI output. And all of this is going to be coming within 170 watts of power. LP DDR5X memory, so low power memory that allows you to fit in, inside that 170 watt envelope. And that's something the low power shouldn't put you off. It's literally just a way of make, making sure that you're able to get things done using low power without having to go above, you know, 170 watts. You also have over the air upgrades. So you just plug it in and it will just upgrade and improve itself automatically. Now, if you want one of these bad boys, you're going to have to reserve it and you're going to have to get into a queue to be able to reserve it because it's not yet available. Now, I do want to focus on things that are available right now, but this one, if you do want to reserve, you can get into the position for being able to get a reservation. There are no reservations currently, but there are a number of countries and there are a number of suppliers. Now, it is limited as, as, as a number of countries that you can get it from or get it to deliver to so far. And you're limited to Asus, Dell and HP for some of the period, for the period of the uh, reservations. So I'll have a link to the details here if you are interested. We have had some leaked prices, but I want to wait until the actual prices are announced before actually talking about th that. But remember, they are going to be competing against Apple essentially. And so the prices are going to be fairly steep. Okay.